Hello everyone, and welcome to the second week of the quantitative optical imaging class. This week we are going to be looking at how to work with matrices. We'll be looking at two-dimensional and three-dimensional matrices in this course, but for now let's just focus on 2D matrices. A 2D matrix is a rectangular array of numbers, such as the one shown on the screen. Now you might be wondering why we care about matrices. Well, it's because almost all data in MATLAB is represented as a matrix or has a very similar data structure to one. Additionally, as we will see in a few weeks, image data is basically a giant matrix. So it's important for us to get comfortable with working with and manipulating matrices. Going back to our example, each number in the matrix is known as the element. We can refer to numbers being in rows and columns of a matrix. In MATLAB, the size of a matrix is always reported as number of rows by number of columns. So for example, in this matrix here, it has three rows and two columns, so it has a size 3 by 2. Let's go ahead and create a matrix in MATLAB. We'll start by creating a matrix consisting of a single row of numbers, also called a row vector. We're going to store the matrix as the variable A. So in MATLAB, we're going to start with A equals. Now to create a matrix, we start with the left square bracket. And then we type in numbers separated by space. So in this case, the matrix we want is 1, space 2, space 3, space 4. To finish the matrix, we're going to close it with a right square bracket. When we run this command, notice that the variable created in the workspace is a matrix. And we double click this variable. We can see it is a 1 by 4 matrix, which has values of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now let's create the column vector B. Just like the row vector, the column vector only contains values in a single column. Going back to MATLAB, to create a column vector, we would start B equals, we're going to start again with the left square bracket, and this time we're going to separate the elements with a semicolon. So I'm going to go 2, semicolon, space 4, semicolon, space 6, semicolon, space 8, and then we're going to close this with the right square bracket. Notice that the last element does not have a semicolon to it. Running this, we see that the variable B has been created and it is a 4 by 1 matrix. There are a couple things I would like to point out. When creating the row vector, we use the space to separate matrix elements. However, you could also use a comma, or you could use a comma and a space. While either of these commands work, I recommend that you use one that contains at least a single space to separate the elements as it looks much clearer in a long piece of code. Similarly, with the column vector, you can separate elements with only a semicolon, but it looks much clearer if you use both a space and a semicolon. Now let's actually create a two-dimensional matrix. We're going to create the matrix C as shown on the screen, and we will be entering the elements in one row at a time. All right, switching back to MATLAB, we're going to start with C equals left square bracket. And then we're going to enter the numbers of the first row, which were 1, 2, 3. Since we want to start a new line, we're going to add a semicolon after the 3. And then we're going to continue with the next row, which was 4, 5, 6. And we're going to end with a right square bracket. And again, if we open this up in the Variable Explorer, we can see that it is now a 2 by 3 matrix. One last thing, let's get MATLAB to return the size of the matrix. To do this, we're going to use the function size. We go open parentheses, C, close parentheses. Notice that the output is written in our variable ANT, um, and it is a 1 by 2 matrix. And the first element of the matrix is the number of rows, which was 2. And the second element of the matrix is the number of columns, which is 3. 